I am proud of the fact that uh, way, way back in your first run for political <laughs> office, when you were running for the state senate, uh, Carol and I, right. young political, young political <laughs> activists from, from San Francisco, went across the bay to Point Richmond and right. walked precincts for uh, for George Miller. He went to the state senate, and now uh, and then on to uh, Congress, where you've been for forty years. Yes, yes. Uh, and this year, you announced you're stepping down. Why? It's been forty years. <laughs> it's been forty years. I've been flying back and forth across the country every weekend, and. Uh, I've had a great run. I love the job. I'm really proud of what I was able to uh, to accomplish. Uh, but there's other things I'd like to do. I'd obviously like to continue to follow my passions with labor, with the environment, and, and certainly with uh, education, uh, but in a different form. It's been 40 years here, yeah. What are you most proud of in the, in the form? I mean, you, you have accomplished a lot, and I, uh, I was proud to write a column about you and Henry Waxman yeah, this week, yeah, which I, I think are two of the, you know, two of the most effective uh, and successful members of Congress and, and hardest working that I've known. I think the American people yeah. have known. But of all of those things that you've done, what do you, what do you really most? Well, proud really, of? I, uh, you know, I started. I would say at the beginning of my career, I had an opportunity to write, uh, uh, which was at that time was called Education for All Handicapped Children, which is now Individuals with Disabilities Education Act (IDEA). Uh, and when I first got here, along with Tom Harkin, and then at the end of my what I consider the end of my career, I was able to be one of the principal authors of the Affordable Care Act. And mm. uh, in 1974, when I was running, I ran on the national health care plan and ending the war in Vietnam. And when I started thinking about leaving, when I was at the signing ceremony in the White House when <laughs> President Obama signed the Affordable Care Act, I thought, wow, I'm standing on top of Mount Everest here. There's, there's not much <laughs> up from here, you know? And, and it just really sort of was... Yeah, that was a big event for me to have that. That was a magic moment. I was there in the East Room. It was. Uh, with, it with was. The press so, you know, this, that day. this was a hundred-year argument. And it looks like maybe we'll be hung, we'll be arguing it now <laughs> for another hundred and ten years or something. But uh, it was a big event, and it's a huge event for Americans' families. And do you think that uh, d Democrats will in twenty fourteen will be able to go out and talk about the Affordable Care Act and 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 run on it or will they be running away from it i think they can talk about it and they'll be they are able to talk about it in some very uh, almost conservative terms if they if they want they this is about freedom this is about families being able uh to really follow their dreams to uh, to know that their kids are going to be taken care of and it's about economic security never ever again will you lose your health insurance if a traumatic event hits your family and Health in, right now, you know, health costs are the number one cause of bankruptcy because without this mm -hmm. insurance, people put it on their credit card, they can't manage it, and all of a sudden they're losing their home. And that just isn't going to happen anymore. So it's huge for economic security for families, for people who want to start a business, as the CBO report just uh, reports. It's going to allow people a lot of flexibility. Uh, if you have a child with a disability, maybe you, you want to work a few less hours, but if you work a few less hours, you're going to lose your health care. No, that won't happen to you in the future. So... It's a big deal. It was uh, uh, unusual to see a pre the president, uh, a president of the United States. Uh, they always have their honored guests in the gallery, uh, whom they recognize. But um, last Tuesday night, the president recognized two members of Congress who were sitting side by side, you and Senator Tom Harkin, on the issue of the minimum wage. I mean, that's you've been a champion of that, too, your entire career in Congress. Are we going to see some action this yes, year? Yes, you are. You are. Uh, the, the research now on the minimum wage is, is really spun completely around. We now see that it's very beneficial to communities. We see if you have a state where you have a higher minimum wage and a state where you have a lower minimum wage, the higher minimum wage, small businesses are hiring more people. Cities now are understanding you can't mm -hmm. have a thriving, vibrant city on the backs of poor people, uh, poor workers. Uh, and so they're raising the minimum wage. More money is on on, on uh on Main Street, these people have to spend this money because they're essentially low income, so they have to pay the doctor's bills, they have to, they have to you know, put gas in their car, groceries on their table, education supplies for their kids. So it really starts to change an economy, and, and, the, uh, uh, and that money generates that economic activity. The old studies where it said, oh, this means everybody's going to lay it off and you're taking jobs from teenagers, 
Well, the vast majority of minimum wage workers are over 20, and many of them are providing a major part of the wage in that family. Uh, so it's a different demographics, and I think American families that went through the Great Recession may have somebody with a college degree that's working at the minimum wage, and they're asking themselves, how can my son or daughter live on 7.25 an hour? Right. Well, you know, every, ever since um, I my days with Jerry Brown, way, way yeah. back, right, yeah. uh, I've heard this argument that if you raise a minimum wage, you know, it's going to cost Americans a job. We're going to lose all these jobs. And I still hear it's never been proven true, but I still hear it today from Speaker John Boehner. And well, so they're how, stuck in the past. I mean, they, they, they're they just stuck in the past. Their conservative nature is, is, you know, hasn't allowed them to move forward and look at the new evidence and look at the economic studies and look at the cities that have increased the minimum wage. Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego, San Jose, just on the on the West Coast. You know, uh, New Jersey by initiative with the opposition of Governor Christie. People understand. People are making fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars an hour. Say, how the hell can you live on seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour? It's mm -hmm. just you can't do it. And they have, and there's that empathy, and that's why in the polls across all regions, across all parties, people support increasing the minimum wage. The Republicans are going to vote for it. They just don't know it yet, but they're going to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Let's get that message out. <laughs> are you you're listening, John Bader? He's probably down at Pete's Diner right now, right? I hope yeah, right, yeah. I hope they've got the show on the air down there. So. It, I have to. I have to ask you about. I mean, you, you've you know the ratings, the, the poll ratings for members of Congress right now, and and you know that this 113th it looks like is going to be the the most do nothing Congress ever. It must be frustrating for somebody who wants to get things done like you. you know, it is. It is to be working uh, with these guys. But uh, you know, uh, and and the problem is, the, you know, the actions of a few take everybody down. So the so the yeah, tea, the yeah. Tea Party can create gridlock. But like gridlock and traffic, if you're the if you're the 400th car down the street, you're still stuck. Yeah, you know, right. the guys are brawling in the middle of the intersection. You're still stuck, and and people are angry. They expect the Congress to respond to the needs of this country. They expect us. You know, we still can't get an infrastructure bill. There's no disagreement about how far we're falling behind in the basic physical in infrastructure of this country and highways and roads and bridges and airports and ports for the new generation of ships and new generation of airplanes. And America's not there. Right. When you travel overseas, you just see what's going on in those areas. And you can see why people are shifting their, 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 their freight routes to different, to different ports to, you know, to, uh, to not come to the United States in the new modern ships because we don't have ports that can receive them. Those are jobs. Those are not only construction jobs, but they're jobs in the increased activity. And, and uh, so the Tea Party has decided that, the, you know, they've really convinced themselves that the government provides no value added. Therefore, if you get rid of it, nothing lost. You know, it's not a problem. It's just a denial of American history. Yeah. You know, the government has been a catalyst for basic fundamental research. Uh, if you look at the new the, the, the book, uh, The Entrepreneurial State, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Steve Jobs was a genius to create the iPhone. He created it out of eight basic fundamental technologies that were funded by the Department of Defense, uh, Department of Commerce th through DARPA and other federal agencies that he assembled and created the iPhone. That's the way it's supposed to work. We were the catalyst for defense that no company could afford to do. So how do you turn this Congress around? Well, I think, you know, well, I think... Maybe not this Congress, but Congress around. Well, I, I think... Because you were there today, yeah. if I could just... Well, you were there today when you may not have been in the, in, in the majority even. But there was an opportunity to get some things done because you could you had people there who were in between elections, right, were focusing on problem solving. I spent a lot of years in the minority. I still got things done. I was able yeah. to work with, uh, I worked with John Boehner and George W. Bush to do uh, the mm -hmm. education reform of ESCA, No Child Left Behind. Uh, I was able to create national parks in California with Jerry Lewis. He was very much opposed to them, but you could still negotiate. You could figure out how to do this. Uh, over and over again, Don Young and I introduced the largest bill to fund land and water conservation fund. Here's Don Young, as far right as you can get from Alaska, and George yeah. Miller from, <laughs> from the San Francisco Bay Area. And we got the hook and bullet crowd, the, 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 uh, uh, you know, the wildlife groups, and, 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 and really preserving America's great natural assets. Today, they don't want any part of it. They want to destroy it. They want to knock it all down. So what's the answer? Getting <laughs> Well, I think they're burning their I think they're they're uh, they're burning the franchise, they're destroying the brand. You see in some polls sixteen percent of the people identify with the Republican Party. Pollsters tell us when you mm -hmm. ask people are you Republican mm -hmm. or Democrat and they know what you are because they can see how you're registered. 
Repub- fewer and fewer Republicans are saying I'm a Republican yeah, when they answer right. the phone for the, for the polling data. So uh, the brand's taken a big hit, and uh, uh, the country can't stand still, and I think more and more people are going to realize it. The Republicans have done nothing in the last, in the last three years to do, to, um, in creating jobs. They have done nothing. Nothing. Right. And we also and now they're in a position. Excuse me. They're in a position yeah. where uh, you see Cantor says he wants to do something on education. He wants to do something on school choice. He wants to do something. And with the commentators who immediately read the legislation or the ideas of the press conference say, "Well, they want to appear like they care about families." That's a wonderful agenda. I want to appear that I care about families. Is that politics, or do you really care about families? So their new agenda is let's appear like we're friendly to families. <laughs> yeah, and let's let's appear like we're reaching out to women and yeah, we're yeah. reaching out to minorities. Right. And yeah. We're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, nothing has changed. Philly fan ninety nine wanted us to ask you, Congressman Miller, about Alpha House. Alpha House. Tell us about Alpha House. Well, one of the things when I was considering my retirement, I realized I'd been married for 50 years, and for 40 years I've been living uh, in Washington, and 32 of those years I've been living with Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin. Uh, <laughs> and so I thought maybe it was time to go home. It's been an adventure. We, uh, we started out in a snowstorm. Of, uh, Congressman uh, Marty Russo from Chicago uh, couldn't drive home in a snowstorm, so he, he moved into my house, and, and he never left. Uh, I, I tried, <laughs> he started remodeling and insulating the house and doing all these things. Uh, and then uh, 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 Leon Panetta uh, was, oh, right. was one of the roommates, along with uh, Sam Gadenson from Connecticut that oh, yeah. time. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we've had, uh, we've had quite a, a group of people. Right now it's uh, Senator Durbin from Illinois and Senator Schumer from, uh, uh, from New York. And, uh, we, we, you know, it's, it's been good. You know, Washington is a, is a tough town, and it's, it's nice to uh, be able to go back and maybe we only chat for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, uh, we all are on different schedules. We're, we're, you know, we go home at different times uh, to our districts. And, and so it's really worked out uh, for that reason. But it's been a lot of fun. It's, and it's been a subject of a lot of jokes and a lot of... Uh, and, of course, you've generated right. your own TV show, yeah, right? Well, Alpha that's the theory. House but they Amazon. made it all Republicans. They can't possibly be having as much fun. And they're talking about all the wrong issues. But other than that, I guess it's a hell of a deal. <laughs> <laughs>